Turning on your computer has most likely become muscle memory for you at this point. You simply press the power button, it spins to life, and you can continue on your way shopping for out of stock and overpriced GPUs. And while the button press is timeless and effective, it's kind of boring. We can make turning on a PC much more interesting. And in today's video, let's do exactly that. Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and today let's explore a few unique ways to turn on a computer, with each method a bit more extreme than the last. With the last method being the coolest way that I have ever seen a computer turn on. So stick around. Before we jump into our first alternative way of turning on a PC, let's first talk about the traditional way of turning on a computer and why it works. A PC case provides a power button generally on the front panel of the computer case. When pressed, this button sends a signal through this specific wire, which when properly connected to the motherboard, initiates the power on sequence. Now, plugging in these front panel connectors into the right spot actually makes for, in my opinion, one of the most difficult parts of building a PC. Mainly because each motherboard has these pins in a different location, and by the time you're plugging them in, your motherboard's already in your case, so you don't have a lot of room to work with. This is where the motherboard's manual comes in a lot of help. So when you finally find the right pins to cover, your power button is now fully functional. So with that out of the way, the goal here now is to find unique and interesting ways to short out these power pins, which is exactly what the power button normally does. All right, onto the first power button alternative. This here in my hands is a momentary switch, something you might find in an airplane cockpit or a military setting. A momentary switch has two states, with the on state only being active as long as it's held there, hence momentary. Now, we can use this on state to send a power signal to the computer, which is exactly what we're going to do. To tie our momentary switch to our PC, we're going to need a very special cable. One that on one end connects to the switch itself, and on the other connects to the power pins on the motherboard. These cables can be a bit tricky to come by, so I will leave in the description exactly where I found mine. And now, the moment of truth. It works. Now, one of the main drawbacks with a momentary switch is that most cases don't have an easy way for you to install it without a bit of modification. As a solution to this problem, I have seen other individuals drill a new hole into their case in order to expose the switch from the underside. Alternatively, what you can do is remove the front panel from your case and replace the button with the switch itself. I have here an NZXT H510, and what I've done is removed the front panel and this hole that originally housed the power button is actually the perfect fit to expose this switch. And with a little bit of elbow grease, we can install it to the outside of the case, which honestly looks pretty dope. Prepare to launch in three, two, one. Up next, let's detach ourselves a bit from the stationary button. In today's day and age, we have wireless mice, keyboards, headphones, you name it. So why should turning on a PC be any different? In that spirit, this here is a key fob, which you guessed it, allows you to turn on a PC as if you were unlocking a car. The secret sauce of this one is actually this wireless PCIe adapter that can slot into my motherboard and pick up the signal from this corresponding remote. As you can see, this adapter also has our familiar power connector, so we can short out the power pins on the motherboard to receive that power signal. Now, one thing that I particularly like about this design is that while you can plug in this switch to control your power, you can also feed through the existing power button of your case so that you don't have to choose one or the other. They can both work in tandem. So to install this, we just need to find an open PCIe slot. That'll do nicely. And then simply cover the power pins with this guy. And with that installed properly, now with the press of a button, we can turn on our PC remotely. I also believe that they make USB versions in addition to this PCIe model, but I will leave a link in the description of this one specifically down below. The only issue I've been having with this remote is now I just can't remember where I parked my PC. Ah, which one of these is mine? Ah, there it is. Oh, right next to my Mr. Easter t-shirt, which is now available on my website, mrgeaster.com. A few of the designs are limited edition, so check it out before they sell out. And just a quick thank you for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Now, this last method of turning on a PC is by no means practical, but 
I firmly believe is one of the coolest ways that a PC can be turned on. As you may know, water generally conducts electricity, which is why you've probably heard you should avoid mixing water with electronics. If you were to accidentally spill water on, say, a laptop, for example, the water can actually cause electricity to jump to places that it shouldn't be, causing what's known as a short. This definitely has the potential to damage or even destroy your electronics, so best to be avoided altogether. And in case you're curious what steps you should take if you do accidentally spill water on a running computer, you can check out my TikTok, which I'll leave in the description below, which covers that exact topic. Safe to say that water has generally been looked at as an enemy of computers. So with that, I've always been curious if we could harness this conductive property of water in order to give life to a computer as opposed to destroying it. Now, stay with me. Starting with this normal glass of water, we're going to add a heavy amount of salt into it in order to ensure its conductive nature. When salt is added to water, the sodium and chlorine atoms separate, creating ions in the solution, which allows electricity to flow through it. Now that we have our salt water mix, each of these tiny water droplets contains the same property that a traditional power button would have. Because again, all we have to do is short out those two power pins. For context, these first two pins here are the power pins. With our power supply turned on and our concoction ready to go, let's see what happens if we bridge these two power pins with water. I'm using a straw here to expose just a single droplet of water. And as always, please don't try this at home. And with that, we can see that the computer boots to life with water. Honestly, that's just one of the coolest things that I've ever done. It's just so cool that the ions in the water effectively join the two power pins together and just goes to show that maybe everything can be helpful when looked at from the right perspective. Just knowing that you can turn on a PC with water is really awesome in my opinion. That said, you should still definitely be wary of water around electronics, just to be safe. So now you know how to turn on a PC with a momentary switch, with a wireless remote, as well as with water. If you know of any other really unique ways to turn on a PC, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear about it. I'll read through them and maybe I'll make a sequel. That's all I have for you today, so if you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe to follow along my tech tinkering adventures. I promise you it's a lot of fun. Until next time, I'm Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a wonderful night.